Present in engaging ways the colorful and diverse history of our city from its earliest days to the present. As a member, you'll receive The Argonaut, an award-winning publication that has provided in-depth historical accounts for over 30 years. And The Panorama, a quarterly newsletter covering ongoing activities and historical presentations. Go to sfhistory.org and discover the San Francisco Historical Society, giving our history a great future. Become a member today. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM at HD1 San Francisco. An Odyssey station. Good morning! Yeah, yeah, we are. It's time to wake up. It's five, and we're live. Oh, is this thing on? I don't care. I want him to hear. This is the pregame show, your early morning shot of sports on 95.7 The Game. Come on! Well, we told you this Golden State Warriors offseason would be loaded with content. Didn't think it'd be coming this quickly. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is the pregame show. I am your host, Joe Spadoni, and for the next hour, we are going to dive into the possibility of Bob Myers, president of basketball operations for the Golden State Warriors. Could he be going? Could he be leaving? After 12 years with the organization, Coming up as assistant GM back in 2011, taking the full-time gig the year after that. Could president of basketball operations, the guy with four rings, the architect of it all, Bob Myers be moving on? Well, per Sham Sharania of The Athletic, sources, Warriors and president of basketball operations Bob Myers have had no substantial contract extension talks in months and the sides are bracing for the likelihood that Myers could walk away from the franchise. And we're going to start there at 888-957-9570. How big of a loss would this be? Because we're talking about a guy who's been through it all with this team. He's been there when they won their first title. He's been there when they lost in 2016. They blew the 3-1 lead. He's been there when they got KD. When the drama of that last season Blew up in their face with the injuries, with everything. You remember him crying at Katie's? That wasn't his presser, but it was a presser talking about Kevin Durant having the Achilles injury. You remember that whole offseason, how tumultuous it was. Hell, that regular season was tumultuous. Question after question. Is KD going? Why is he going? Him and Draymond. What's going on there? Are we picking Draymond instead of KD? All of that. Fast forward to last season. Did you even think you were winning another title with this core? They did, and they go into this season with a two-timeline. James Wiseman, Moses Moody, Jonathan Kaminga. Let's develop these guys while also having our championship core. Oh, by the way, let's sign Andrew Wiggins to an extension. Let's sign Jordan Poole to that extension. And then the punch happened, and everything changed. And we realized throughout this season kind of the elephant in the room was Bob Myers future with this franchise. So I ask you at 888-957-9570, how big of a loss would this be for this organization? Good morning to all of you on Twitch and YouTube. We are up and streaming there. Go ahead and check us out on the Odyssey app. Download that bad boy. Favorite 957 the game. Good morning to everyone who's just getting off work, just getting ready for work. Please be safe out there driving. It's not wet. Just like to Say be safe, even when the conditions are fine. People drive crazy, even at 5 in the morning there. So appreciate all y'all chiming in this early. Stunna, AK66GS, Brandon, Nicole, Adrian. The Warriors are running back. I think you mean running it back. AK66GS, if Bob Myers don't come back, then Draymond is gone. See, that's, that's where my mind goes. This is going to be such... A tough job to take if you are on the outside looking in. Now, I think they would go internal here if they decide to replace Bob Myers, if they don't 
come to an agreement by the end of June. That is when his contract is up. And again, per Sham Sharania, that is what the both sides, the Warriors and Bob Myers are bracing for, that Bob could be walking away from this franchise. And what has he meant to this franchise? He's meant stability for me. He's meant professionalism. He's given respectability back to this front office and to a franchise that, let's face it, for the better part of my life, they were a joke. They were a laughing stock. And then everything changed once they drafted Stephen Curry. And you can talk about that we believe year. It was fun. It was nice. But it wasn't going anywhere. And once Steph came along, once Bob got into the picture, once Jerry West got into the picture, everything changed. Without Bob Myers, I don't think the Warriors are here with four titles in the last 13 years. That's how much he has meant to this franchise. And it's pretty wild that we are talking about just coming off a year after a championship, the president of basketball operations for the Golden State Warriors, Bob Myers, potentially moving on. It's just wild. Life comes at you fast. And this season is a huge example of that for the Golden State Warriors. Started off with a punch heard around the world. We're now realizing that that punch, it had effects that lingered throughout the entire locker room, throughout the entire franchise. And I do think it would be not fitting, but it would leave a little bit of a sour taste in your mouth if you're Bob Myers, if you're the fan base, that that's the note you're leaving on, getting ousted by the Lakers in the second round, that punch lingering over the entire season. And we could be honest with ourselves. In hindsight, Steve, Bob, Joe, the entire front office, they didn't handle that well. There should have been a suspension of some kind. Ring night, whatever, for Draymond Green. They could have handled that in a better way. They could have handled the KD situation in a better way. I'm going to play some sound here in a second. It's a little bit long, but I think it's important to the conversation we're having today as it pertains to Bob Myers. And as much as I've already glowed about him, and I continue to glow about him, I say he's the fire extinguisher for this organization, the amount of fires he has had to put out. And listen, and maybe that's not the right way of putting it, putting out the fire. But putting a, what is it? Putting flowers over an ugly pig. That's a horrible analogy, but you get what I'm saying. He tries to dress up something that is not a nice situation. In this situation earlier in the season, Draymond Green and Jordan Poole, it was one of the ugliest, if not the ugliest, since Latrell Sprewell choking out P.J. Carlissimo. Like, that's how far back we have to go. And we think of the Kevin Durant and Draymond Green situation from a few years back where Draymond got suspended, and that wasn't even for punching KD. That was just getting into arguments. So you look back, it wasn't all roses under Bob Myers. He probably could have handled things better, and he will admit that. He'll be the first to admit it. That's the one thing about Bob. He's transparent. And if it is the last dance for him and he's moving on at the end of the month, I respect that transparency and the candor. Him and Steve Kerr both. This whole organization, if anything else, they are transparent when it comes to the negativity surrounding them, when it comes to the good times, the bad times, all of that. They are nothing more, nothing else than transparent. But this is what I wanted to talk about today how this organization has kind of been tipping, tippy-toeing around it, not outwardly saying that Bob's probably moving on, but if you read between the tea leaves, it was kind of out there. Here's Steve Kerr at his season-ending presser talking about Bob Myers and going on about him and wanting to keep him a part of this team going forward. Bob is uh, such an important part of our organization, um, not only <clears throat> as... Um, one of the faces of the organization um, out there in the NBA world, you know, meeting with other executives and agents and, you know, representing us in that regard, but, uh, but also with his um, relationships with our players, he's got such credibility with our guys. Uh, there's so much history there. Uh, the continuity 
that exist uh, between um, you know Bob and the older players um, means that he can have those difficult conversations and uh, sometimes even during games, which is pretty rare, um, but but something that has been a huge help for me. Uh, Bob and I have a great friendship, a great working relationship, and I absolutely hope he comes back. Um, but it's also a case where I want I want what's best for Bob, and if he decides that he's going to leave. Um, of course, I'm going to support him 100% and, and we will remain friends for, for a long time. And I would miss him, but um, I support him regardless of what he does. Maybe we should have known from that answer when he says, I want them all back and all this sort of stuff. And then, but the big but, shout out Kim Kardashian, got to be aware of those. But I want what's best for Bob too. And what's best for Bob might not be what's best for the Golden State Warriors. And what's best for the Golden State Warriors is keeping him and paying what the man needs. I just, it's hard for me to envision someone else coming into this job right now, coming off this season. And let's face it, we have to have a reality check here. This isn't the sexiest GM position opening if Bob Myers truly does leave. This isn't the sexiest job. This is very, what's the word I'm looking for? Tricky. You got a lot of egos. You got one of the greatest basketball players of all time, Stephen Curry. You got Clay Thompson, future Hall of Famer, coming off a really bad playoff series. Where's his mentals at? Aging core. You got a young player in pool who regressed, who got punched in the face by his other teammate, Draymond Green, who, by the way, has a player option on whether he should opt in this year or sign a new contract. Do you want to bring Draymond Green back? in an already toxic situation with Jordan Poole. Do you trade Jordan Poole? Jonathan Kaminga, he's disgruntled. Young superstar potentially in him, if everything works out. So there is a lot of moving pieces. Andrew Wiggins is locked up. Kevon Looney. So while there are pieces here, and there are players to win a championship next season, it's not going to be easy for a new guy to come in there. That's why I think if Bob Myers truly does move on, they look at Mike Dunleavy Jr., the assistant GM right now, and probably give him the promotion because he has relationships with all these guys. He's obviously a former first-round pick with the team. He's been with this franchise for a long time. He gets it. Now, how would that move go over with the fan base? Listen, we all love the, the Draymond cut. Let's give Bob some effing credit. We love that. We love Bob when he's on the executive show here at 95.7 The Game. Every other week with Steiny and Goo. Can we get one for old time's sake, Bob? Please. He has a pod now. He has a podcast. He's talking to Jay Cole. He's talking to Steph. He's talking to Drew. He's talking to all these guys. Bob gets it. And when you have a GM that gets it, it makes things so much easier from a player personnel standpoint from a fan base standpoint. And I think we are spoiled here in the Bay area when it comes to general managers and presidents of basketball ops, baseball ops, whatever you want to talk. Just think about the last two decades. This is the success. Easy enough for me to say the success from some of these guys in this region. Hell, you can go back to the early two thousands with Moneyball, Billy bean. Now I know it's fallen on hard times here late Vegas, the move, all that. But if we're just talking strictly on the field success, given the talent, given the payroll, Billy Bean's been a huge success. Hell, change the way baseball is viewed. And that's trickled down to one of his former co-workers in Farhan Zaidi, the current president of baseball operations for the San Francisco Giants. Now Farhan had the one season. Listen, this is not a make or break year for Farhan, but next two seasons it probably is. So if they have some of these stars these young guys start turning into stars like I'm seeing with Casey freaking Schmidt. Oh my God, we'll get to him a little bit later. Just another RBI double, making plays at third base. Guy's a stud. We we're talking about it in our chat. He might have the it factor as it pertains to the San Francisco Giants and a future star in the making. So if they hit there, you can look at Farhan and being another success to start building some of these guys, Kyle Harrison, stuff like that. But that remains to be seen. Brian Sabian, the guy before him, three championships. Pretty damn good. John Lynch. 
a lot of success, a Super Bowl appearance, multiple NFC Championship appearances. They feel like they're on the cusp of a Super Bowl. And then go with the Sharks. Sam, who's the GM of the Sharks? Do you know? He's not locked in. Great prep. But the Sharks have always been there. Blanking on the name, you know. They've been perennial contenders for the last two decades. Better part of it anyways. Last few years, yikes. Not doing too hot. Did not do too hot in the lottery either, I believe. It is what it is. But you get what I'm saying. Overall, here in the Bay Area, we've been pretty damn spoiled when it comes to good GMs. Compare that to a lot of the other places around the league. It's not like that. And losing a guy like Bob Myers would stink. It would stink. 888-957-9570. Here's Anthony Slater, R957 The Game Insider, who joined the Morning Roast earlier this week. And he was talking about the possibility of Myers not coming back. Oh, man. I think it is very much up in the air. And I don't even, I might lean like 51 49. He's not coming back. Mm. And this report was per Shams and Anthony Slater, this article that he has in The Athletic, breaking it all down. Again, if you're just joining us, this per Sham Sharania of The Athletic, reporting with Anthony Slater. Warriors and president of basketball operations Bob Myers have had no substantial contract extension talks in months, and the sides are bracing for the likelihood that Myers could walk away from the franchise. How big of a blow would that be? 888-957-9570. Call or text the Comcast Business Text Line, as well as Twitch and YouTube. We are up and running. Appreciate it. Brandon Cadiz on the YouTube chat. Appreciate you chiming in, Brandon. Oh, boy. I can already see the first bad move Mike Dunleavy Jr. makes. Warriors Twitter is going to be insane. And that's what I mean when I say... This isn't the sexiest job that you might think it is. This isn't the perfect job that you might think on the outside looking in. There is a lot of landmines to navigate here. A lot of egos, a lot of expectations, and a lot of hard truths coming down. Shout out Stannis Baratheon to Sir Davo Seaworth. Hard truths cut both ways. In this offseason, there will be a lot of hard truths to be discussed. Whether it's Draymond Green whether it's Stephen Curry, whether it's Clay Thompson, whether it's Jonathan Kaminga, every single person has got to look in the mirror in this locker room and decide whether they want to be a part of this thing going forward. Because they need this whole team to buy in or they're not winning another title. I think we learned that this season. A Golden State Warriors team that doesn't buy in and is not having camaraderie and is not vibing is not winning a title. It's not happening. Jordan Poole, what's going to go on there? Draymond Green, what's going to go on there? There are so many different layers to navigate here. And God bless whoever takes this job, whether it is Mike Dunley Jr., whether it's an outside hire, whoever. They have got to get this team to buy in. Whether that's through trades, whether that's through some kumbaya sessions, they got to figure it out. Because this is going to be a very tumultuous offseason and a very nerve-wracking offseason for a lot of fans. 888 957 Nine five seven zero. Good morning, Nathan. Good morning, Ready Whip. My question is, where the f is Bob going if he leaves? It's a good question, Ready Whip underscore st. If you're reading the tea leaves, there was an interesting tweet last night. An interesting timing of a tweet from Adrian uh, Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN, their basketball insider. This is what he tweeted: "Quote." ESPN sources, Los Angeles Clippers GM Michael Winger interviewed to become the Washington Wizards head of basketball operations. He's the second known candidate to meet with Washington along with New New Orleans GM Trajan or Trajan Langdon. Trajan, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But that's an interesting spot and location. There's some ties down there. Bob obviously has ties down to Los Angeles. He has ties with Jerry West during his time and early tenure with the Golden State Warriors. Clippers, they're getting a new arena. They desperately want to win. Steve Ballmer will pay whatever it takes. Guy's the richest owner in sports. He will pay. So that's just one opening where I would keep my eyes on if you're looking at Bob Myers' future with another team. The Los Angeles Clippers make a ton of sense. 
a ton of sense. And that would hurt. It would. If you're a Warriors fan, I know you won four titles with the guy. I know you wish him all the best. He's a made guy. We all love Bob Myers. But the Clippers, ugh. at least it's not the Lakers. That would be, I think, more brutal. And Rob Polinka, I think, has pretty much established himself this past year as a hell of a GM with his moves at the deadline. He's already won a title there, the bubble title. I know we like to make fun of it. But he's won a title there as general manager or president of basketball, whatever you want to call it. The titles now. Who's calling the shots? Is Bob Myers going to be calling the shots of the Clippers? It's going to be a very, very interesting couple of weeks here. And again, we'll have all the coverage all offseason long right here on 95.7 The Game as it pertains to Golden State Warriors coverage. Hell, we're doing a whole summit next Monday. That Bone Vino in Walnut Creek from 4 to 6. Be there, be square. It's open to the public. You got Willard Dibbs, Steiny Goo, Bonte Shasky. You got JD hopping in there. You're not going to want to miss that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Four to six next Monday, Walnut Creek, Bone Vino. Be there, be square, get some wine, relax, shoot the S with some of your favorite hosts. I, yours truly, will not be there, unfortunately. I'll be coming off an eight hour shift on a Monday with two kids. <laughs> no thanks. Maybe I'll enjoy a glass at home, but don't worry. I will be streaming. I'll be listening. It should be a good time out there. Again, it's open to the public, and if you are a P1, or hell, if you're not, if you just enjoy casually, it'll be a good time. Bring your family out there. Be lots of fun. 888-957-9570. 954. Morning, Joe. This is Nicole. Good morning, Nicole, on the Comcast Business Text Line. Question. Do you think they should focus a little bit on finding out who's leaking the locker room info? Um, No. Not really. The locker room info, if you're if, as it pertains to Bob Myers, if that's what you're asking, Nicole, I mean, that's probably coming from Bob's camp. It's coming from someone's camp. It's coming from the Warriors camp. It's someone. That's where Woj, Shams, all these guys get their info. It's usually a top guy. I wouldn't worry too much about it. The Golden State Warriors, if nothing else, they've been pretty damn good when it comes to leaks and stuff like that. Now, the video, that was a problem. That feels like that was an outside person not really connected with the Warriors who wanted to get a quick payday and did. That was a problem that it got out there, but that doesn't excuse the punch itself. I think we spent way too much time focusing on, we need to find the culprit on who leaked this bad boy, when we should have been more focused on, did this just ruin the season? And in hindsight, it absolutely ruined the season. 888-957-9570. Prime Rib chiming in on the YouTube chat. Fire pool really that's what we're doing fire pool fire draymond is that come on trade pool yes we're not firing anyone that's not happening need value there i know you're being tongue-in-cheek but i really do believe if this thing's gonna work they need jordan pool part of it moving forward they need jonathan kaminga they need moses moody they need the whole team to come together for a kumbaya session and have some hard truths and I have an interesting little two-minute excerpt here from when Draymond Green and Kevin Durant sat down with each other two years ago, and I think it ties in perfectly to today. This is them talking about the whole situation that went down when Draymond got suspended, the clap gate against the Clippers, KD. This was the ultimate thing on why he left, and it was because the organization didn't attack this thing head-on. It's because they tried to put the fire out. It's because Bob and Steve didn't take the time to sit with the team as a unit and move past it. That's ultimately why KD left. And he discusses it here. And this, I believe, was on Kevin Durant's pod. And this is him and Draymond Green again two years ago, then talking about Bob Myers, why they left, and why the vibes changed, and why that was a big reason why KD moved on. And I think it ties in perfectly to what just happened this past season with Jordan Poole and Draymond Green. Take a listen. For my own personal sanity, because I've been getting my kicked ever since you left. So just for my own personal sanity, how much did our argument against the Clippers drive you to ultimately lead the Warriors? It wasn't the argument. It was the 
the way that everybody, Steve Kerr, act like it didn't happen, Bob Myers and tried to just discipline you and think that that would put the mask over everything. I really felt like that was such a big situation for us as a group. The first time we went through something like that, we had to get that all out. I remember watching the last dance and when Scotty didn't go into the game, the whole team in the locker room said, Scotty, that was up that you did that. We needed that. We just needed to throw all of that on the table and say, yo, Dre, K, like that was up that we even had to go through that. Let's just wipe our hands with that and go f go finish the task. I don't think we did that and we tried to dance around it. I just didn't like how all of that, just the vibe between all of that, it just made weird to me. And I'd rather us be who we say we are, family first, communication is key. Like I, we didn't show that and I, that's what rubbed me the wrong way more than anything. When we landed back from LA, I sat in a, Hazel was sitting in the car for an hour and 45 minutes. They pulled me in that room at Signature for an hour and 45 minutes and they tried to tell me, you need to apologize. And I told them, I'll talk to Kay, but y'all aren't going to tell me what I need to say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they went on for an hour and 45 minutes talking, saying a bunch of <laughs> And ultimately, they realized, all right, we're not getting through to him. We're going to try again in the morning. And so <laughs> we met the next morning and they said, all right, you slept on it. You ready to apologize? And I told them right then and there, I said, y'all about to f this up. I said, the only person that can make this right is me and Kay. And there is nothing that y'all can do and y'all are going to f this up. And in my opinion, they f it up. I think so too. And they told me right then and there, like, we're going to suspend you for this game. I laughed in their face, literally laughed in their face. And Bob said to me, he said, uh, wow, that was not the reaction I was looking for or expecting. And I said, well, either I'm going to laugh in your face or I'm going to cuss you the f up. So you pick, I'm going to choose laugh. So I, I think what you're doing is funny. And so I'm going to laugh. And so it's interesting to hear you say essentially the same thing that I told them that day. That was Draymond Green and KD from two years ago, their little sit down on what led ultimately Kevin Durant to leave this team. It was the clap gate with the Clippers game, all that sort of stuff. Draymond Green getting suspended, Bob Myers asking Draymond to apologize. They didn't attack that head on like they should have. That from the perspective of Draymond Green and Kevin Durant. And in hindsight, obviously, you would love to still have Kevin Durant. Would he still be on the team by now? I'm not sure. But if they just attacked that thing head on as a team and had some sit downs, maybe things would be different. So I can understand Draymond Green's perspective on that. But also at the same time, I could understand Bob Myers being like, are you serious? You're laughing right now. This is a big effing deal, Draymond. And how about you be a grown up for once and take some accountability and not put it all on Steve and I. So I could totally understand that perspective as well. Nicole wanted to clarify something real quick on the 954 not the punch, the starting lineup and all that as it pertains to leaks with the team. Uh, that was a one-time thing. If it continues, maybe that's a problem. But again, guys have sources. Could it have been GP2 telling them? Could it have been Draymond Green? Could it have just been Shams talking to some assistant coach? You never know where these come from. It was a one-off. If it continues to happen as a pattern into next season when lineups are getting leaked, that early, then sure, then you got a problem. Till then, I wouldn't worry too much about it. 888-957-9570. We're going to continue to take your calls and texts. Again, this is per Sham Sharania of The Athletic, Warriors and President of Basketball Operations, Bob Myers, have had no substantial contract extension talks in months, and the sides are bracing for the likelihood that Myers could walk away from the franchise. We'll continue to react to that. And more on the other side, right here on the pregame show. Joe Spadoni, don't go anywhere. 95.7 The Game. The BMW i4 M50. It's 100% electric and 100% BMW. Experience the power of over 500 horses stampeding at a whisper as BMW M-engineered handling takes you through every twist and turn. The complete suite of intuitive technology keeps you connected. The pure performance keeps your heart racing. The BMW i4 M50. Silence has never said so much. BMW, the ultimate electric driving machine. Take advantage of exceptional lease and finance offers today.
Whisper. Thursday morning here on the pregame show with Joe Spadoni. Thursday's best day of the week, I like to say. Got Friday to look forward to. You got the weekend. Let's go. Bob Myers. He might be enjoying his weekends a little bit more, too. Might be a little quieter if he decides to move on. So we've been talking about this morning. Sham Sharani, FD Athletic reporting. Warriors and president of basketball operations Bob Myers have had no substantial contract extension talks in months. And the sides are bracing for the likelihood that Myers could walk away from the franchise. Talking about that. Going to talk a little about what's going on down at Oracle Park. They may have found themselves something. And this guy, Casey Schmidt, started out as kind of like semi-joke, I think, here at the station. Shasky wasn't joking, though. He was all in on this guy, Casey Schmidt. I was like, all right, we're neck deep in Warriors right now. It's the end of the season. Are this team even going to make the plans? I'm not taking talking Casey Schmidt, all right? Now, Warriors season's over. You start looking around the baseball, what's going on. A lot of bad baseball. Even the Giants themselves kind of riding the ship here. Got a little streak. It's good to see. But this guy, Casey Schmidt, and only 36 at-backs. And we'll get back to the Warriors, I promise. 888-957-9570. Continue to take your calls and texts as it pertains to Bob Myers. Again, sides looking like both them and the Warriors are prepared to move on and go in different directions. So, again, continue to take your calls and texts on there. Good morning to Twitch and YouTube. We are up and streaming. But this guy, Casey Schmidt, as Joe Shasky walks in and gives me this coffee, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Shasky. And we'll get into Casey. Don't, oh, we'll get into it. I see your Topps baseball shirt. In 36 at-bats, this guy's already got 15 hits, two jacks, seven runs, seven ribbies, 417 on-base percentage, Slugging damn near 700, 1.11 OPS, and his OPS plus is 199. This guy's killing it. And defensively, he's got that it factor. He does. Bonte said in the chat yesterday, he was at the game. Nice seats, by the way. He's like, Casey Schmidt's got that it factor. He does. You saw it in this Philly series. You've seen it since he's been called up. And it is, it is frustrating. <laughs> That we had to wait to see this, that we could this guy just couldn't have been on the roster. I'll give Shasky his credit. He's like, this guy could be starting day one. Why is he not? And all the playing service time, I get all that. Stupid. It's one of the things I do hate about baseball. Arb, pre arb, service time, all that crap. Can the guy play in the big leagues or not? Can he just sign a regular contract or not? Any other sport, it's that simple. But baseball has to be confusing when it comes to that sort of stuff. But Casey Schmidt's not confusing. See ball, hit ball, and that's what he does. He's got all the tools. And it's pretty damn exciting. And I think this season would be a success for the San Francisco Giants if they come out of it with a couple studs for the future. Casey Schmidt, right now it's early. Listen, 36 at-bats, I'm not saying he's the next Barry Bonds. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying he's the next Mike Trout. But I'm saying he's a young, exciting player on a team with a lot of boring old players. And that means something. It absolutely does. Kyle Harrison, that's their young top prospect on the pitching surface. Can he be similar in that fashion? Now we're talking. If Schmidt's a dude, and we're coming out of this season with him, with Doval, with Estrada, and Harrison, on top of Logan Webb, now we have something to build on for the future. Now we don't have to run Farhan Zaidi. Now I can point to, you know what, Farhan? You got something cooking. I will give you some credit. Now, you would still like to see this team make the playoffs because there's a lot of bad baseball. I think they're only a game and a half back of a wild card. And if you just look around, as I pull up the MLB standings right now, now that I'm more locked in and we as a station are getting more locked in to baseball, if you just look at the National League, the Pirates... The Pittsburgh Pirates are 23 and 20. I know we have to joke about them. That is a young and exciting team coming up. I think they're going to start fading. They're three and seven in their last 10. See, I already, yeah, they're already starting to fade. The Cardinals, 
are 18 and 26. You start looking at some of these blue bloods. Hell, the Phillies were just in the World Series last year. They're 20 and 23. Now, they didn't start off great last season either, and then they ended up getting back all the way to the freaking World Series. Bryce Harper's injury has a lot to do with that. This season, their struggles. Schwarber not doing too hot. Trey Turner having some early struggles, and their pitching has not been great. We've seen that throughout this past series with the Giants. But you look at your own division, and that's the part that's kind of hard to get past. The Diamondbacks are for real. They're legit. Dodgers, God, freaking Dodgers. They just keep winning. 28 and 16, it's like nothing. They get these guys, Outman, who's a baller. Mookie Betts doing what he does. Freddie Freeman. Clayton Kershaw's turning back the, the clock. He's so damn good. Padres are struggling. You don't expect them to be doing that all season long. So the, the Giants are in that weird little 500 type feel. And that's what we thought heading into this season. But I don't think it's the worst thing if they end up being a 500 team, but come out of this season with some studs. I know you would say Spadoni. That's a loser mentality. If we're not going to the playoffs, what are we doing? We're trying to build for the future. One thing we'll say about that 100 plus one season is you thought you had some dudes going in to that season and coming out of it. And what'd you end up coming out of? Logan Webb? And what else? Camilo Duvall? Okay. That's two guys. That's a relief pitcher and a starting pitcher. And what else? Casey Schmidt? That's an everyday dude. Kyle Harrison, if we see him soon, and hopefully we do, that's a potential two or one to Logan Webb. Now you're cooking with some gas. Tyler Estrada, he's established himself as a legit player. So if they start stacking some of these guys, start hitting and actually getting some dudes in free agency, now you got something special brewing in a division. I still think you're on the outside looking in when it comes to the Dodgers. I don't expect the Padres to be this bad, all that bad moving forward, but it's the Padres. You never know. They could easily swing and miss. They've done that a lot in the past. The Dodgers are still there, and it's incumbent on this Giants front office and staff to start hitting on some of these young dudes. And Casey Schmidt, he may not be the next Mike Trout. I don't know what he's going to be, but I do know he's young and he's exciting, and that is something that the Giants desperately, desperately need. We'll get back into basketball on the other side. Need to do a quick pit stop there with baseball. We'll ask Joe Shasky his thoughts on Bob Myers. Again, Sham Sharania of The Athletic reporting. The Warriors and president of basketball operations for the Golden State Warriors, Bob Myers, have had no substantial contract extension talks in months, and the sides are bracing for the likelihood that Myers could walk away from the franchise. What does that mean for the team? What does that mean for Myers? What does that mean for the station? No more executive show? Are you kidding me? Come on. Don't like that. Maybe we'll have one more parting executive show. Come on, Bob, for old time's sake. Gotta say goodbye to Goo. Don't consider, don't say goodbye to us right here on the pregame show. Come on back. Joe Shasky for the cross Jover coming up next right here on 95.7 The Game. Comcast Business Complete Connectivity checks all the boxes. With Cyber Threat Security, the largest, fastest, reliable network for small business. And save up to 75% a year with Comcast Business Mobile. Get started for just $49 a month for 12 months when you add mobile. Plus, ask about an $800 prepaid card. Comcast Business, powering possibilities. Ends 521-23. Restricted supply requires two-year agreement, eco bill, and auto pay. New 100 megabits per second internet and security edge customers only. Equipment taxes and fees extra. Mobile savings premieres pricing of top three carriers. Comcast Business, internet required. Isn't it nice to get exactly what you want? Introducing the new My Plan from Verizon.
95.7 The Game. Welcome back. Free game show, Joe Spadoni, 95-7 the game. Been talking Bob Myers, future with the Golden State Warriors. Will he stay or will he go? Should I stay or should I go? We've been talking Casey Schmidt. Just ho-hum, performance, double, two RBIs, does what he does. A couple of web gems, clutch. Schmidt happens. That's what they say. Schmidt happens. Are they printing out those shirts yet? With the Schmidt happens? They need to. Just do all the puns with Schmidt. And I think you're okay. It's a tough name, though, if we're going to be talking about him a lot. There's going to be a lot of flubs here. And there needs to be the dump button ready. There'll be a lot of inadvertent you-know-whats with Casey Schmidt. By the way, how have I not mentioned this already? And I'm seeing the highlights on TV constantly. Jimmy freaking Butler. I've gone 50 minutes into this show, not mention him. Are you kidding me? Himmy Buckets? Now, listen, I'm not getting my head up. I'm not saying the Heat's going to win this series because I believe they won the first game last season, too, of this series. But Chris Mannix of Sports Illustrated, he tweeted out something. And I actually, listen, Kobe's my guy. He's my favorite player of all time. You guys see me wearing his jersey. He's my favorite player in sports history. But I do get Kobe vibes when I watch Jimmy Butler in the playoffs. I get Michael Jordan vibes. This guy takes over games like a Kobe and like an MJ. And now we might have to say like a Jimmy Butler. Like he's just that good on his own. He just, he does everything. Whatever it is, the playoffs just brings the best out of him. And it's like, the way I could equate it to is like, if you're in high school, or you're in, you're not, you're not really into homework, right? You take that whatever, and homework in this analogy is the regular season. It's like, okay, I'll do it. I'll I'll be up for it here and there, but I'm going to miss a lot of assignments. I'm not going to take it too seriously. But when it comes to test taking, oh, you best believe I'm acing it. And that's what I'm seeing with Jimmy Butler as Joe Shasky of the Morning Roast joins me now for the crossover. He's just unbelievable, Joe. When, when those lights shine the brightest, he's just, he's a gamer, man. Well, and I think the, like, Kobe, I get where you're coming from. And I'm not trying to, like, split hairs here. Kobe was great in the regular season, too. No, he was. So, like, the he w- took it seriously. Yes. yes. So, what I would say is the variance from regular season performance to elite playoff performer, here's the analogy in pro sports. Oh. Madison Bumgarner. Oh, Bumgarner was an All Star though, wasn't he? Multiple, one year, one? and it was because of reputation from what he had done in 2014. Okay. I believe it was the 2015 season. Uh, look again, Jim Butler, good basketball player in the regular season, unbelievably brass balls elite yes. come playoff time. Yeah, right. And it's the same thing with Madison Bumgarner. I mean, I'm telling you, that that's what it reminds me of. God, sneaky old Jimmy Butler too. I mean, it really is. He's turning 34 this year. I know. I thought he was like maybe he was like on 30. A bunch of dream teams. He was. He I was. Mean, yeah, you know, he's he's been around for him in 2011. The, the videos of him and Clay Thompson running routes as football players. Oh my God, that's old. Remember that? Man, just, I just, his career is going to be so fascinating when we look back because I'm not sure. Maybe, hell, maybe this is the year that he breaks through because if he upsets the Celtics, I do think there's a chance that the Heat could win it all if they beat the Celtics. Did, there's a chance because this season's been so weird. Like anything could happen. And I just wonder how we look at him, this guy, six-time All-Star. He's been All-NBA five times. You start looking at it, yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Five-time All-Defense, yeah. Olympic gold medal. I mean, basketball is so damn easy to get in the Hall of Fame. Everyone gets I, it. I know, but... You can get in the Hall of I Fame. I think what he's done with the Miami Heat, the bubble, everybody kind of rolled their eyes, you know, outlier shooting, blah, 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 blah. Last year, I mean... He was exhausted. The, yes. the meme of, of him, you know, up against that the was in the scene. bubble. That was the exhaustion. No, I meme. know, but yeah. I'm saying the meme was all over the yeah. all over the, the planet last year because they were they were exhausted. Max Struess is taking game winning shots for them down the stretch. And, Gabe Vincent, yeah, Who game are six, these guys? And game seven. This is last year. Yeah. They easily could have beaten the Celtics. 
it was a tie game with what a couple minutes well, to go. I remember Struess. I think it was the guy that got called out of bounds, yes. but his heel never hit, yes. and they made a three on that play. Looking back, that changed everything. It's, so what I'm saying is like Warriors would have swept them, but that's yeah, okay. There. But but they, still, getting to a finals is a huge freaking accomplishment. I didn't have Jimmy Butler going to the Miami Heat and getting them to three Eastern yeah. Conference finals. No, it's a good point. Right, and then yeah. he could have been to two finals. It was where I was going with that. Like, that's pretty. Uh, I hold Jason Kidd in high regard because he dragged some Nets teams. I don't care what the era was that had no business being in the finals. And let's not act like these series that they're playing in are easy. Like, are you kidding? Like Bucks. Oh, I mean, they slayed the Knicks? best. Yeah. Knicks, Knicks, like any Thibodeau team you're going up against, that's going to be a grueling, grueling series. And now with the Celtics, who have br- the prohibitive favorites all season long, and by the way. The rookie head coach, Joe Mazzula, his it's starting to look like a rookie head coach, right? Mm-hmm. That run they went in the third quarter and not calling a timeout? Come on, man. Well, like that, that that's when it shows. You saw Spolstra right off the bat in the fourth quarter when they were up 12, I believe, going into that. There was a 7 0 run immediately, timeout. And then they just regrouped and extended that lead. Like, that's just the little things you see from yes. a rookie head coach. We haven't seen it too much from Darvin Ham yet, but you're seeing it with Joe Mazzula at times. With the uh, Boston Celtics. Well, you know, it's interesting. Spolstra plays zero favorites. I mean, no. th- think about the last what, eight, nine years since LeBron left them. Uh, and then you had the Chris Boss situation, right, where his career is prematurely cut short because of blood clots. I mean, Dwayne Wade and then it's Hassan Whiteside and Dion Waiters. Yeah. And they turn those Kendrick guys. Kendrick Nunn. Yeah, they turn those guys into like max contracts. Now, you, we could argue about like probably not worth max contracts, yeah. and we all agree. But then they flipped those guys. I mean, they were heartless and had no problem moving off of guys when they needed to. Um, and you look at their roster. I mean, think of how many people have come out of nowhere on that team. You're referencing Gabe Vincent and Max Struess. I mean, Duncan Robinson got a huge deal and is on the bench. Yeah. I mean, yeah. very pl- very yeah. little play. No, he played last night. He actually has hit some uh, clutch. I know, but he's been on ice. But he's been on ice. Tyler Hero, another guy. Like, uh-huh. he, like that injury hurts too. Maybe if they get to the finals, who knows if the he Martin comes back? The Martin guy coming out of nowhere. Yeah, like, Caleb Martin, right? Is that yes. his name? Yeah, Caleb Martin. So a lot of good things there. Jimmy Butler just had to take a few minutes on him. He's been a baller. But the big story today, Joe, What's that? not Casey Schmidt, and we'll get to him. Maybe really if we have thirty seconds, but Bob Myers, Sham Shrani reporting on yeah, the Athletic yeah. Warriors and President of Basketball Operations, Bob Myers. I've had no substantial contract extension talks in months, and the sides are bracing for the likelihood that Myers could walk away from the franchise. Your thoughts? Well, I put it out last night. I mean, I'm sad. I don't want to see Bob Myers go. That's me. Um, I'm really kind of blown away how many people can't stand. Like, they think Bob Myers did a bad job, just in general. It's it's wild to me. And then the other part that's wild to me, and, and I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve I hate credit. I society we live in. I know. Well, no, it's nuts. I um. A part of me also, I heard from so many people, it's Jerry West, it's Jerry West. Jerry West was the big the big miss. Jerry West, Jerry West. Yeah, Jerry West was very influential, but he wasn't doing the day-to-day grind. Was he over uh, like a consigliere, you know, yeah. uh, overlooking things? Sure, I'll, I'll give him that. He was only here a couple of years. Now, he helped bring in Kevin Durant. He helped them not trade away some of their players. But we act like Bob would have traded everything away, and if it weren't for Jerry West, everything would have gone to crap. Are we not going to give Bob Myers credit for Andrew Wiggins, our second-best player in a championship run last year? Is that what we're doing? How about like- just maintaining the relationships and not allowing Steph Curry? In an era where every superstar loses his mind and wants to leave a team, having the relationship with Steph Curry to where everything can even be possible? Not just Steph. Think about the egos on this team that is now coming to surface. We didn't think about this team as a selfish, quote unquote. And I'm not calling them selfish, but everyone's got egos. There's some drama. There's some. There's a yeah, lot I'll, of drama going absolutely. on. Draymond Green ego, absolutely. Stephen Curry ego. He's one of the best. Like, yeah. he won't show it, but there's an ego fact. Clay Thompson, we're seeing it now in a big, big way. Jordan Poole, Jonathan Kaminga. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? I know. There is a lot going on with this and, team. And and I'm, no one's saying that Jerry West wasn't influential, but we're act, again like we're acting like like Bob didn't do anything. Like he just sat there and and just kind of like crossed his legs and was like, "Jerry, what do you think?" I don't know. It's it's, it's weird the revisionist history. Sorry, not to cut you off, Joe. He's the guy that had to talk during all this crazy stuff going on. The KD and Draymond drama. He's the guy that had to face the media when the injuries happened. He's the guy that was crying. I and mean, maybe if you don't like Bob, why are you doing that and stuff like that? I respected that. You know why? Because I feel like Bob is an authentic human well, being, as which look, means a lot to me. As we look at, you know, the 
San Francisco Giants, and we say, like, what's the thing that they're missing? It's like that human touch element. That's the one thing. Like, John Lynch may not be the greatest in terms of scouting. Scouting. Yeah. We're just going scouting. But the human element, I think he's really good at. He's really good at. And then, listen. I think he's really good at. Some GMs aren't good at that, but they're good at other things. I look at a guy like Billy Bean. Yes. One of the like most influential figures in yeah, baseball he's horrible history. horrible human element. He's horrible. But <laughs> yeah. that's his whole thing because he has to be cold-hearted because he can't get in relationships with these guys that are trading three um, years down the road. Farhan, I think, yes. is similar. He's cut from the same cloth. He's like, listen, like he's not a very personable guy, which I think during the downtimes rubs fans the wrong way. Think about who your favorite players yeah. are on the on this team right now. Yeah. Just think about it right now, right? So Steph Curry, obvious. Okay, whatever. You, Larry Riley and Don Nelson, whatever. Like, just put that to the side. Most people's favorite player on this team, outside of a superstar named Steph Curry, is Kavon Looney yeah. over some of these other people. Who the hell do you think stuck with Kavon Looney? Okay, how about GP2, who you love? Now, you can argue, hey, they should have re-signed him, whatever. They did find him out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, out of nowhere. You yeah. know, I know Jordan Poole, everybody thinks he's been a big headache. You know, you know how hard it is to find anyone to contribute on a championship team out of nowhere? 30th pick, 28th pick, whatever you want to call it. I give him huge credit for Moses Moody, who was playing clutch exactly. minutes in the playoffs. And, and also, again, back to Wiggins. Like, and, that was a huge deal oh, that was for this monster. team. Monster. monster. They, they didn't win everything. a championship no. without him. And, and, and here's the thing. If, he's any, if there's one criticism that you want to have of Bob Myers, which I think is a fair one, maybe he's a little too close to the big three. You know what? So sue me. I mean, name a business in America that wasn't loyal to some of their top earners to a fault. Like that happens all the time. All over. You know where you you know you get in trouble? When you marry yourself with Kyrie. Yes. That when you get too close to someone like that. Exactly. Right. That that's and I'm just using him as an example. And like, I'm not trying to destroy like you, Kyrie, you but it's being look, realistic. You can look back with the Los Angeles Lakers, Mitch Kupchak. He was the architect of all those those championship teams, Pau Gasol, all that sort of stuff. And then you look back, he's like, probably shouldn't have given Kobe that huge contract, but you know what? It's Kobe and, Bryant. I'm going to overpay for him because, you know what, it's good business, and I will go down with Kobe because, you know what, I won with him. So I yes. understand stuff like when that happens, like I'm not going to fault that. How many GMs currently in the, in the NBA have a championship under their belt? Oh, I, Rob Palenka, mm -hmm. Bob Myers, mm -hmm. that's two. Mm -hmm. So And whoever, then if you want to say Pat Riley, but who's, the dude, who's over in uh, Milwaukee? I don't even know. Yeah, his name. I don't know his but, name. But so, the um, uh, guy in Toronto, we're, like we're, I see. It. There you go. We're talking about a very Pat Riley yeah. short yes. list. Very, okay, less than ten. So I, I don't <laughs> I, I, like less than seven. Yes. So like my point being is like I think people are like ah, oh, you got to win it every year. Do you know how incredibly difficult it is to win one championship, let alone be the head dude for four? It's incredibly hard. That's now, no one's saying that he doesn't have warts. They all have warts. But the batting average, everyone's saying that he's missing out on. Oh, he sucks at this, this, that. Dog, his batting average comparative to other GMs, it's unreal. Speaking of batting average. I mean, he's Tony Gwynn. Down the right field line, and a fair ball. Two runs are going to score. It's 2 nothing Giants. Casey Schmidt coming up next. Baller. On the morning roast. <laughs> You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMC-FM at HD1 San Francisco.